Welcome. Happy 4th of July. And welcome to our 4th of July special, where we'll be celebrating the Daily Planet staff, representing, you know, the First Amendment and the freedom of speech and the freedom of the press. So with me as I have some cool people here, I got first up, you may know him because his voice is loud and proud, Mr. Brian Peters of Brian the Guys. Oh, hey there. Hi there. Ho there. <laughs> Second of all, we got the Toy Master McFarland's right hand man, Levi. What's up, Levi? How's it going, guys? And then last but not least, we have the great and mighty that you've heard on this podcast, and you probably listen to his podcast too, Mr. Anthony Desiato from Digging for Kryptonite. Hey guys, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. I thought this would be fun. Now, we think James might be out fighting crime. Uh, our friend Finch, he had messaged us a little bit ago, and he had lost power in his home and was waiting for um, that to be resolved. So he sent me his list, though, uh, so we can just kind of go from there. But what our goal is today is with the announcement of Cass and we know of the Daily Planet staff that we have in James Gunn's upcoming Superman movie, currently filming in Ohio, <clears throat> is we thought we would look at different versions of the characters that have been cast, and we would all basically create our own Daily Planet staff. So I created this tier maker, which will be in the show notes. And as soon as I grab my pen, my, my goal is what we'll do is we'll see who we all pick if there's doubles and we'll try to figure out a way to kind of make a group list of how we as a podcast have chosen um, these daily planet staffers. Now I did include, um, you can't see them all on here, but I did include um, animated versions of the characters from certain uh, shows. So I didn't dig into all the, you know, animated properties that we have, but you know, because some of these have only been in animation and not really in much live action. But I thought it'd be a fun time. So we're going to start. We're going to go, just to make it simple, I'll go Levi, Anthony, Brian, and then I'll read Finch's and I'll do mine. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. So we're going to start with Ron Troop. And yes, Ron Troop has been representative representative represented in live action uh once but it's been in a couple of animation so we'll start levi your ron troop for ron troop i'm going with the one i'm most familiar with which is the dc animated universe one okay and by that you're representing this one right here uh no one with the the coffee cup and clark oh so from the tomorrow verse yeah, yep, that one. Sorry. Okay, okay. All right. Any particular reason? Just the one I remember seeing the most. Uh, he tends to have pretty small bit parts in the stuff that he's in for the most part. This is true. All right. Mr. Desiato. Yeah, this is tough because this is a character that, when adapted, usually doesn't get a lot of play. I'm going to go with the gender bent Ronnie Troop from My Adventures with Superman. We're currently in the midst of season two, it's a great show. And though it's a different incarnation of the character, at least the character gets a, a good amount of play on that show. So I'll go with my adventures with Superman. All right. Mr. Peters. Papa Peters. Um, I'm going to go with whatever one you choose, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, wow. so I like I, this power uh, I have over Brian now. Um, yeah, you have the power, man. Um, so I've had uh, a lot of things thrown at me these past few weeks, so I apologize. Uh, I didn't think I would be a part of this podcast, but um, and I didn't realize animated was a factor. So I was not thinking uh, animated. So uh, Ron, I guess I'm going to go with the one with the coffee cup. All right. Because right. that's the animated one that I am familiar with and I, I do know. Um, yeah, we're going to go with that, that one. All right, all right. Finch has right. joined us. <laughs> so, Finch, who Finch. is your who is your selection for Ron Troop? Uh, I went with two. I'm not familiar. 
familiar with him too much, but I saw the picture. So. Okay. Well, my choice is the one with the coffee cup from the Tomorrowverse. And mainly because I thought it was a, a quick, good representation, but it also is the reason why I started putting cinnamon in my coffee from this scene. So it made me smile. Though the Ronnie Troop version was pretty close. But looking at our little scorecard I made here, this will be our podcast version of Ron Troop. We got the most representation. All right. This one we have next, Steve Lombard. Lombard, yeah. Yeah. Um, happy to finally see in live action again. Um, but we're going to start here and, uh, we'll start with Levi, your Lombard. Uh, I went with the man of steel version of Lombard. I think at least in today's world, he works best when he's still a bit of a meathead, but not too much. And you get hints of that in, in man of steel, but he still takes the time to help out when a coworker is, uh, trapped. Okay, all right, Mr. Desiato. This might be cheating, and I don't know if this if this is even allowed. Now that I'm looking at what's laid out there on the grid, but if I can pull from the forthcoming movie, and I know this is bold because we haven't seen it, so who, who's to say? But just in terms of the casting and the set photos, Beck Bennett as Steve Lombard, mustache in all its glory. I don't know. I, I'm if nothing else, I'm very intrigued and excited to see that take. So that's kind of. At least that's the one I'm most excited about right now. Okay, okay. That Not, does feel like absolutely perfect casting for that. He does. All right, Finch, your Lombard. Uh, I went with the, the one in the purple shirt. I believe he's from All-Star Superman. Okay. All right, the one I'm moving right here. All right, Brian. Um, I chose uh, I chose Beck Bennett because um, I think it's perfect casting. I I'm <laughs> the mustache is all in his glory. I I you know basically basically what's already been said. Um, I'm very excited for that that casting. He's gonna be a meathead. He's gonna be a jerk. Um, he's gonna have machismo, you know, turned up to the max. So I'm I'm very excited about that. That's my choice. Okay. Um, I kind of went with uh the my adventures version. Um, because I thought he was pretty funny and just the way he's kind of this loner that you think's like really confident, but we see like with his episode where he kind of lays it out with Jimmy. Um, so. Yeah, so none of us had the same, but you two, and I don't have a picture because uh, I didn't put any of the new casting in here. It was all the previous casting. So we do not have a Lombard for the podcast today. We have tisk, no tisk, tisk. So, all right, this well, next be, one. I guess we'll allow it, right? <laughs> um, this next one is Cat Grant. And I'll tell you guys right now, this is one of the hardest ones for me to pick. That Cat Grant was the one that actually had me stumped. But we'll start with Levi. Who is your Cat Grant? I went with the CW Supergirl version. All right. So Callista Flockhart. Any particular reason? Any reason why you're happy uh, with Cat Grant? For me. I think the Daily Planet characters work best when they've evolved being uh, exposition or just side characters. So she's got her own company, her own motivation in that one. Uh, it's a, If I remember right, it's pretty heavily implied that she figured out Kara as Supergirl. So I'm guessing by extension, probably Clark is Superman as well. So. Mm, okay. All right. Anthony. Who yeah, I went with the, the Callista Flockhart Supergirl version as well. I feel like that's the most developed. I mean, she's further along in her career and development than you would typically see in the comics, but that could be a good thing. And again, not unlike Ron Troop or Lombard. I mean, not one that we've seen a ton done with in other media. I mean, of course, Lois and Clark comes to mind, and she has some great moments on that, but 
looking at that season and, and her depiction in it, it ultimately for me it was too one note uh, mm -hmm. to really give give my vote for. So yeah, I go with the Supergirl version. Okay, okay, Finch. I also went with Mrs. Harrison Ford, uh, Clarissa Lockett, and it's because similar to what the guys said already. Um, we a lot more of her. You know, I she's just like a little side character, and in this show, she was she was a pretty big. Um, she was a character though, and uh, yeah, you know, we also find out like towards the end of the series that she had a heart of gold. You know, like I mean, she she would do anything to help Kara. So, all right, all right, Brian Peters. Um, well, I, um, I almost, I almost went with the, um, the Cat Grant. I can't remember the actress's name from, uh, Lois and Clark, New, uh, New Good. Superman. Good. I was scared you were going to say the, the one, the second one from Smallville. I was scared for a second. <laughs> no, no. Um, I, 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 I like Cat. I like Cat to be overly flirtatious. I like her to be ridiculous, um, making making Jimmy uncomfortable. Ma well, making Jimmy very comfortable. My apologies. <laughs> making <laughs> making uh, making Clark uncomfortable sometimes. Um, uh, I like that. I, I like Cat not showing all she really is and putting that face up. Um, so she is my choice, um, but. I do think that Michaela Hoover is is more attractive <laughs> than the one in uh in mm. in uh, Lois and Clark New, New Adventures of Superman. So I think Michaela is probably going to give her a run for her money, um, because Kayla Michaela looks more attractive to me than the the woman that was in New Adventures. But uh, yeah, Brian just puts Michaela's scene from The Suicide Squad on repeat. He's like. <laughs> Play again, play again, play again. Now that's acting. <laughs> it's just not true. <laughs> it's not true. I'm just playing. I, I, you know, it's just not true. All right. So that leaves me. I, so this was difficult because you was like, first of all, it would never have been the Smallville too. No. <laughs> or my adventures. Um, But actually the two I had it down to was Cat Grant from the DC animated universe, even though she's in it very small, um, because she felt like more of a, a character and wasn't as typical. But I'm I'm leading towards Callista Flockhart because she's the most developed character we got. Um, but she's definitely farther in her journey than I would want Cat Grant to be. Because I like the idea of Cat Grant being part of the Daily Planet staff. And by this point, she's gone on to do her own thing. But I think she is the most developed uh, version, and that's our most votes. So that is our cat grant. No Tracy Scoggins? No. I you know, I'm glad that her representation was there, but I really hate that she just departed. They uh let you know kicked her out of the show, fired her, whatever, um, without ever giving us any dialogue of what happened to her. There's no line in season two of like, you know, cat went to the Daily Star or cat disappeared, or you know, um, she transferred, you know, like something one, one piece of dialogue. Sometimes all I need. So I know Anthony, you feel the same. You hate that non-continuity stuff. Well, it's the sort of thing to your point, a line, that's it, right? I understand that there's not a lot of real estate to work with sometimes, but just a line can go a long way just to put a little bit of a bow on it for people who are invested in following it and care. So yeah. She went to the Daily Star. She went to GBS, whatever, anything. I say that because uh, Anthony, for those who don't know, if you're not familiar with his podcast, Digging for Kryptonite, right now he's part of his, he's digging, he's knee deep or actually head over heels into Superboy. Um, and he was doing his most recent episode. He was discussing things. And you, if for anyone who's familiar with the Superboy show that come season two, they fired and got rid of uh, everybody but Lana. So, you know, we're, I heard him talking and we've talked before just that, oh, ladies and gentlemen, 
James, James the coal. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, the coal miner. Did you, did you uh, put out that fire and save those cats from trees? The yeah. Godfather, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, James, real quick, give us your pick you for do Ron for Troop. Me. What? <laughs> give us your pick for Ron Troop, Steve Lombard, and Cat Grant. Um. All right. Uh. Oh shit! Sorry. Apologies. Um. Cat Grant. Um. Let me see. I, I, my cat Grant is, um, uh, Supergirl. All right. Cool. All right. Lombard. Um, you know, I, uh, the only one, I live action one I was actually familiar. Oh, it's everybody, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with, uh, Superman Unbound. Oh, Nice. Okay. And uh your Ron Troop. Uh Ron, uh let me go with my adventures with Superman. All right. Okay. Janine just made fresh cookies and then threw them in my face. Can't resist it. <laughs> right. I'm like, dang it, boy. All right. So Jimmy Olsen. Now we're starting the top tier tougher's. Uh, I'm actually legit curious about who uh who everyone's favorite Jimmy is and I did try to put every version of Jimmy just for rep- to make sure I cover it, you know. And uh yeah, so I'm excited. We're going to start James, you first. I'm going to change um, up the order just to make it easier on me. Now. <laughs> all right. Uh Superman returns. All right, Sam Huntington. Yes, Sam Huntington. Okay. Reasons? Why is he your favorite? For reasons? Uh, well, I mean, I I love him as an actor, you know. Um, his portrayal was pretty goofy. He didn't get a lot of screen time. Um, but uh I I just I really enjoyed like when when uh Clark shows up at the Daily Planet um and and he brings him the cake little messed up and then uh goes out and has a beer with him it's because clark was seeing llamas all right fincherin who you got for mr olsen i went with the uh dcau um he he saves superman's butt quite a few times here and just, you know, he was always there during this, always. So he had a pretty big part and probably one of my first things. Uh, All right. In a movie, but um, I like that, that Jimmy. All right. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Levi? I went with McCod Brooks from Supergirl. I like... Kind of like we were talking about with Cat Grant, I like him being a bit further along in his journey. Uh, I like that version being a bit more equal uh, on terms of uh, friendship with Clark and Superman, as opposed to being uh, almost a sidekick to him. Mm. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Anthony. I mean, I'm always going to demand justice for Henry James Olsen, so I'm kind of inclined to go Smallville, but uh, I think I'm going to second the DCAU version uh, for the reasons that have already been said. Uh, and I think that one struck struck a nice balance between him, like still feeling like a kid, but not a little kid. Like he's still out there. He's still mixing it up. He helps. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and he was just, you know, a, a big part of that show. So I'm going to go, yeah, DCAU, Jimmy. All right. Brian. Um, I also went with Superman Returns with uh with Sam. I I just really liked uh I really liked his chemistry with Brandon. Uh I I kind of felt like I think I, I'm rooting for him more for the potential that we could have had. Like he's not in the movie very very much. 
Um, but the cake, you know, going for the beer, um, you know, him saying, you know, Lois Lane's a mommy, you know, <laughs> uh, and just, just kind of being that friend. And, uh, and I also, I, I almost went with Adventures of Superman, Jimmy, but I kind of felt like he was a, bit, a little bit too much, too much of a doof, uh, or, uh, you know, too, too much getting into trouble every five seconds. Um, you know, I th I felt that Sam was, um, Sam, Sam was smarter, but definitely that buddy that's just really going to be there for you. So, okay, Jimmy right. Flamebird. <laughs> so when I was trying to figure out my Jimmy, I actually was kind of going through it and thinking about each one. First of all, as much as I like the actor right here, this Jimmy did not make the cut. Uh, but he needs to be represented. Uh, I had it down to three. Sam Huntington, Jack Larson, and Jimmy Flamebird. And in the end, I went with Jimmy Flamebird. I really ah. like his energy. I like <laughs> ah. um, I like the friendship. I like that right off the bat. Like he he figured out Clark is like was something up. Um so now this is our first time having to do this. Everyone has to go back through. And you have to pick either the DCAU or Superman Returns. So we can decide on who our podcast Jimmy is. Because those two are tied at two votes apiece. So, James? Oh, man. If you got to put it that way. Um, I might have to go with AU. We just we got more of him. Okay. You know, he did, he did more. Venturing. I'm sticking with my I'm sticking with my answer, AU. Okay. Levi. I'll go returns. All right. Anthony. I'll stick with DCAU. Okay. Brian. Stick with returns. And that brings it down to me. And uh I'm gonna go with AU. I'm going to go with AU. It's tough, but I like that Jimmy. I like the Jimmy. It's tough, but yeah, I'm not going to overthink it, but that's what we're going to do. That'll be our Jimmy. Okay. All right. Here's the big one. And I put him here because I feel like as a part of the Daily Planet staff, he is kind of third rank. Because I think that Perry and Lois are the top tier Daily Planet staff. So um, now this is Clark Kent. And I have every version of Clark Kent, except I did not put David Wilson's Clark Kent on here because I just, I chose not to. Um, but this is about his Clark Kent, not his Superman. So we'll start with James. Um, if he was on there, I had some issues. I noticed later some of the photos would not be accepted. I had to go like change the file format and everything. So... Um, I caught like that's why Erica's Lois is down here. Her picture wasn't accepted, and I guess the when I tried to resubmit Dean's, it didn't work either. So I do apologize. Um, well, man, you know, Clark Kent, that's I mean, that's got to be the hardest one of them all. Um, so many good versions. Um, I mean, I would, I, it, it's kind of a toss up with me between, um, uh, the DC animated movie universe, uh, Henry and Tom, um, you know, I mean, Tom, we got a lot of Tom as Clark, but, uh, you know, the, the thing that, you know, one of the things I like about, uh, you know, and we didn't get a lot of Clark with, um, the DC animated movies, uh, he was mostly Superman. The, the, mo the most Clark we got from him, I think, was really just um, uh, the death of Superman. Um, but I think I'm going to go with Henry here. Um, you know, I mean, mostly with, uh, you know, like, uh, especially out of BVS working at the Daily Planet. Um, standing up, you know, wanting to pursue the story. Um, 
out of out of trying to do the right thing. You know what I mean? Um, disobeying, uh, disobeying um, uh, Perry, not doing the work he was assigned because he believed in something more. Okay. All right, Finch. Well, as I mentioned, uh, Dean Kane, I didn't see him on the list. He would have been my pick. Uh, because he can still count, like I said. Everything about him, obviously, you know, not not so much, but uh, uh, everything he did in that show was very good. And he would always get back and do the stories, you know, like actually write the articles and stuff. Um, but since he wasn't on Christopher Reeves, and that's because of the whole everything when i think of clark kent i think uh chris around and the you know slouching and the you know and going like the way he transitioned from yes i'm superman you know like it just mm -hmm. it, it's perfect so i went with uh christopher reeves okay levi so I'm with James. This is the toughest one for me because my favorite version of Clark Kent, we've never really seen work at the Daily Planet, um, which is which is Tyler. Mm. I mean, he got he got fired from the Daily Planet in the first episode of his show. So I think just because we didn't see him actually work at the planet, I can't do that. So I'm probably going to go with Tom. Because we saw the most of him as Clark. We actually see him work at the planet for, what is it, three seasons, two seasons? Eight, nine, ten. Three seasons, yep. So, and once he eventually got the glasses and kind of doing the slouch and trying to have a secret identity, that, you know, we actually start to get Clark out of him. All right. Anthony. This one was actually very easy for me. If we're strictly looking at Clark, the reporter, it's George Reeves, hands down. His is the toughest, most badass version of the character, confident, capable. You remove Superman from the equation, that Clark Kent still 1,000% just stands on his own and is driving the action and is getting in people's faces. So George Reeves is my pick. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think you, I mean, I think you get that from George and from Dean, honestly, in, in those respects. They're in a similar camp. I will say that they're hanging out and more seen... confident. Like I feel yeah, like, right. I feel like yeah. Dean, George, and even like John's Clark kind of have these similar vibe. So, all right, man, child of steel. Um, this was the toughest one for me, man. Um, because I feel that Tyler, um, Tyler Hoshan is probably the best Superman um, and all around and uh, it's real tough. Uh, Dean, Dean and George kind of going on what uh, Anthony said, you know, Dean and George get crap done, man. <laughs> like when it comes to reporting. So um, I almost went with George, but um, I'm, I, I know James is going to give me crap for this. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I, I'm going to go with uh, Christopher Reeve. And and the reason, hear me out. The re, the because I knew you were going to go with Henry, even though he barely was Clark Kent. Um, <laughs> so there's some tension here. If you guys have no, <laughs> like, <laughs> I know we we I love that guy. Um, no, it, it's, it's we kind just of what, we it's just. Kind of, it's it's kind of what Finch said. Um, I I like Clark being. Uh, I like Clark being somebody that you would never think is Superman. I and Chris just I mean it's not totally clock, comic accurate at the time because you know <laughs> Clark was very much kind of tuned with Superman and being tough and strong and stuff most like George did but Chris taking taking the persona of Clark and just slouching and just changing. Like I always go back to the scene where he's trying almost telling Lois, like they Superman and her apartment and how he takes the glasses off and he just does a whole entire character change completely. 
Like, and you, it's almost like you're looking at two different people. Um, I, I like my Clark like that. I, I like him to be something, somebody that you never think would be Superman. They can never do these great, awesome things. Um, that's that's. So I'm going with I'm going with Chris. All right. Um, I'm going with Tyler because that first introduction of him on the phone with Mr. White, and he's like, "Yes, Mr. White. Yeah, yes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Of course. I, you know, Great Caesar's Ghost is pretty outdated because he says, um, "Yes, people still say that. Yes, yes, sir." And then later, like seeing his interaction. When like he's like Clark Kent from the Daily Planet, and he's there, um, and the way that he makes Cat uncomfortable, where Cat goes from being the most confident person to all of a sudden like she's like, "You didn't tell me Clark Kent was coming," and like we see this confidence, Clark, but we see at times like a little bit of the bumbling, like when he trips and comes out of the elevator, and he tells Jimmy, "Yeah, I actually did that. I I didn't do it. I'm fake it. I actually did it." Um, oh, that's one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. So like, one. you know, they, they retool his Clark a little bit uh for Superman and Lois, but his initial appearance in Supergirl uh is my favorite. So based on everyone's pick, we have the most we have is two for Chris. Because we had Henry and then Finch went with Chris because he said he he, he could have picked Dean. Like I said, just the picture didn't populate. We have a Tom, a George, a Chris, and a Tyler. So are we agreeing that with two votes, Chris wins? Yep. Which is one of my I'll be honest, is one of my least favorites, Clark. Is Chris's favorite. what a great victory for me. <laughs> I just because I, I always say he his Clark is too far the other side. Like his Clark is too far that people wouldn't take him serious as a reporter. You would you would wonder how he's able to get the stories and do what he needs to do because he would be looked as too much of a goof and he would draw too much attention to himself um for being so odd and awkward. Right. It, I don't it, even it, think Brandon got that far in Superman Returns, and then his short stint as the editor in in Crisis was was pretty great, but yeah, so Clark, very little of him as Clark. Yeah, he Brandon got to turn it down just a little bit and make it. So I think Brandon's Clark is a good Clark. Um, just some of his, he's a little bit more awkward than he is like completely like bumbling, um, goofy. Like when they're in the like the picture the scene is from, where he just kind of smiles at Lois and she's like, mm. but speaking of Lois, that's our next one. And I'm. I have my theory which one's going to pop up the most, but I am still curious. We'll start with uh, James. Oh, there's a couple it could be, but I'm going with Erica. Mm-hmm. Did not surprise me one bit. All right, Finch. Erica Durden's is fine. She's uh... The original fine actress uh, Terry Hatcher. Ooh, my young, my young self loved me some Terry Hatcher, Lois Lane. So, so you're going with Terry? Yes. Okay. All right, Levi. This one for me was the easiest one. It's Bitsy from Superman and Lois. All right. Can't argue with that. Anthony. Over the years, I've gone back and forth a little bit between Erica Durant and Terry Hatcher as to who I think is the best Lois. But in terms of the one that was probably most formative for me, but also wanting to have some variety in my list of the people I picked for this game, uh, I'm going uh, Erica Durant from Smallville. All right. Brian. Oh, this was easy peasy to lemon squeezy for me, man. Margot Kidder. No, I'm just kidding. Like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought he was going to go with Kate. <laughs> Brian knows that that answer is not allowed. Not, oh, no, actually, I don't care. Um, I can't wait till next year. I cannot wait till next year when Giannia will release her thesis on how Kate Bosworth is not the worst Lois Lane. It was, she won me over. 
Uh, she she won me over. She her her. It's, it's, I mean, she could almost get a doctorate over that thesis. Um, it was that good. But uh, my answer is definitely. I mean, obviously Terry Hatcher, man. I <laughs> think you know. Uh, yeah, uh, Erica is really great for uh, reasons. Uh, but for for you know for dominance and just the fact that if I had a time machine, I would go back to the early '90s and I would probably leave my wife for Terry Hatcher. And uh, I'm going <laughs> to leave it at that. <laughs> uh, this one was hard because I I had it down to three. And, you know, I look at, I try to look at the arcs and everything. But we, uh, I went back and forth, honestly. Like, it's so tough because... I think Terry Hatcher season one of Lois and Clark is amazing. And then sadly, she kind of gets diminished. And on the opposite, Erica gets better in like season nine and 10 and eight, like as Lois, because they actually let her be Lois in those seasons. Um, but then Bitsy has the strongest drive of like a reporter and the importance of the journalism. Um, and I think this might be our first three-way tie, but I went with Bitsy. Nice. So I think this might, I think we're just might have to have a three-way tie because I don't think anyone's going to shift because uh, everyone picked two, two, and two. So yeah, that's going to be, have to be my answer here is a three-way tie. You know what? Here, I'm going to shift my vote to Bitsy. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Be- because no, I mean, her take, has been tremendous and when we're really looking at cons- series long consistency we haven't seen the fourth season as of this recording but I- i'm reasonably confident it will maintain so really factoring in the consistency aspect the longevity uh, i'm going to shift to bitsy so she can be our winner yeah. all right and she's great yeah, yeah she's great i mean she she gets to be a mother as well she's gone through some serious hardships you know I mean, Erica's fantastic, and and she got a lot of bits of Lois's personality throughout the series, but she didn't get to become Lois until season eight. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. The editor in chief, Perry White. All right. I'm gonna start with Mr. James. I sit in the dark and brood and cold. Mm. Um, well, you know, I like, I like most of our Perry Whites, um, that we've had, uh, you know, I mean, Lawrence Fishburne, uh, um, why am I blanking on names now? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I like all of our Perry Whites, Lawrence Fishburne, (laughs) Lane, uh, Annette O'Toole's husband. (laughs) 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 Um, no, but, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to go with, uh, Lane from Lois and Clark for my pick. All right. Finch. Lois and Clark, uh, it was my pick also. He just feels like a, you know, Kent, uh, Lane, all right, Levi. This is another tough one. I went Lawrence Fishburne, though. I thought he had some great one-liners, and it's Lawrence Fishburne. And I feel like if he would have got uh, another movie in there with a little more Clark focus as opposed to, to universe building, we just saw some some real great Perry White out of him. Mm. Okay, Anthony. Oh, Lane Smith from Lois and Clark, hands down. I think he has the best mix of the gruffness with that softer paternal side that a lot of the other versions don't have or you only get like fleeting glimpses of. So, yeah, Lane Smith for me. Brian. Um, I like what Levi said about Lawrence Fishburne. I, I think Lawrence Fishburne could have been a very high-ranking Perry over time if they would have got more movies. Um, but my answer is going to have to be Lane Smith. Um, Lane 
Um, even though the, Elvis, the Elvis stuff was a little bit goofy, um, and Jackie Cooper really had some great lines, you know, since you know, great interview since God talked to Moses. Um, <laughs> but Lane is the one that just always stuck with me the most so that that paternal side and and that you know that being a boss and the stress uh levels that he had and dealt with um i i just i i thought lane was just fantastic so all right well our winner is going to be lane smith i will say that because the majority vote already is lane smith but i picked jackie cooper because of what brian said i i thought he was just a great newspaper man and i feel like so much of what jackie cooper brought um it feels very J. Jonah Jameson at the same time, though. But I just love that line about since God spoke to Moses. Um, it is probably the best Perry White line. Um, probably. Yeah. But Lane Smith, I think, has the longest tenure as the character as well. And just the most screen time as the character. So I look right. forward to that. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne's great. I mean, one of the... that that scene from man of steel um, where him and Lois are talking uh, about uh, uh, her leads going cold. The story was smoke. Like he's like, not for one second do I believe, but I think you're making the right call. Like, I think that, I think that was very, you know, it's, it's very smart on his part as a newspaper uh, editor. This before they see somebody flying across the sky, you know? <laughs> yep. So we're going to run down our cast Now, uh, James voted for this one, and so we had two votes for this uh, Lombard. And since we have a picture of this Lombard, I'm going to throw him up there. Uh, so here we have Ron Troop is from the Tomorrowverse. Steve Lombard is from uh, Unbound. Cat uh, Grant is Calista Flockhart from Supergirl. Jimmy Olsen is from the DC uh, AU, which is Superman the Animated Series. Our Clark Kent with two votes is Christopher Reeve. Lois Lane is Elizabeth Bitsy Tullock from Supergirl and from Superman and Lois. And our Perry White is Lane Smith from Lois and Clark. All right. We did it, team. We did it. Now, here, I'm going to ask some quick question, lightning round questions real fast. Just the top three. Okay, Perry, Lois, and Clark. We're going to go through the line, and I'm going to ask you which one's your least favorite. Are you ready? Lightning round. James, starting with Clark. Go, James. My least favorite Clark? Yep. Um, least favorite Clark is... Uh... <laughs> Let me go with animated uh, movie. Right here? Yeah. All right, Finch. Finch may be having some more technical problems. Sorry. Finch, least question. favorite Clark. Um, no, no, sorry. Um, least favorite Clark, dang it. Uh, that's hard. Uh, I think because we like them all. Movie too, because yeah, Finch which one? Which one did he say? I broke up. The tomorrow verse, maybe. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, tomorrow that's another one that didn't import. Yeah, it's another one that didn't import. Levi. Uh. This is the slowest lightning round in history. Probably Chris Reeve. All right. I think Anthony. you sprung it on us. <laughs> That's the whole yeah. nobody, nobody thought about who their least favorite Clark would be. Like, should like, always oh. be think, should always be thinking and ranking, thinking and ranking. Anthony, season two, Superboy. Ah, I like the way you think, my friend. Brian, makes sense. Can I change my answer? <laughs> yes, you can, James. Uh, Henry Cavill. Okay, I know you well enough to know exactly why you picked that. So, me too. So, I'll just I let you and James argue later. Uh, my least favorite is Kirk Allen. Like I, I hate it, but I just his portrayal of Clark. Sometimes he feel 
it just there's not a distinguish as much from his supergirl his supergirl jesus his superman and his clark and there's just some like takes and things he does as clark i'm just kind of like yeah my my real answer is kirk allen he he that's my real answer i was just being a jerk <laughs> um kirk kirk just felt goofy at times man like and the suit kind of almost felt like it didn't fit him like it just and the glasses it's, it's just kind of it was goofy all right lois lanes ready james go uh least favorite would be margo all right finch His favorite Lois? Yep. Uh, you guys are going to kill me, but returns uh, Kate Bosworth. Yeah. All right. My, my, my bottom three. Oh. All right. Levi, least favorite Lois. Uh, we'll go with Margo. All right. Anthony. She's not as bad as I think everyone makes her out to be, but if I'm really ranking them, I'm a Kate Bosworth. Brian. Amy Adams. My Mine is Amy Adams. And my wife's thesis is how Kate Bosworth is Lois is better than Amy Adams. And she sprung it on me. We were watching Man of Steel. and No, I was watching Superman Returns. And she sat down. I was like, oh, that's my least favorite Lois. And she sat down and was like, hmm. No, and she gave me a re- I was like, dang, she changed my mind. Let uh, me break it down to you. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. The more her, like her character gets more diminished. But yeah, Kate Bosworth used to be my my bottom. It, my bottom three was Amy, Margo, and Kate. So but all right. Least favorite, Perry White. Starting with James. Why does Margo get so much hate? Um, because her character is so not Lois. I, I, that we I all think know. I think for I think for the time she was just meant to be this this strong, like feminist character. But in my opinion, she's just mean. <laughs> she, she's 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 mean to Clark more so. I mean, but granted, you know, Noel Neal pulled some things on Clark too, like you know, reporting her car stolen, and then Clark gets arrested for it. You know. That's, that's some that is a great lowest moment, man. It, it was it was great. I, I haven't seen enough of George Reeves um, adventures with Superman to uh, to to really say on that, honestly. But uh, for Perry White. Um, oh, man. Uh, I would have to go with. Um, Superman Returns. Frank Langella. All right, Finch. Fantastic actor, but so little in that movie. Um, I can barely the guy with the the vest and the black and white. I don't know. I don't know who. All right, know. right here. Randomly pick him. Sweet. All right, Levi. Uh, I'll do a Finch and go with that one because that's the one I am not familiar with at all. This one right here? Yep. Okay. Anthony. Superman Returns. All right. Brian. Skeletor. The true answer is this guy because he fired Clark in the beginning, you know, but he got no screen <laughs> no, time. My, Frank Lang, uh, um, uh, Frank's an amazing actor, but as Perry... Um, you know, it just, I don't know, it just didn't work. He didn't feel like the character out of everyone who's like supposed to actually be the character. He is my least favorite because I just, I don't feel any Perry. He feels like he's another editor. He's like George Taylor. Okay. So and the only, yeah, the only real scene he got was, you know, divvying up who's getting what for su- Superman is everything. And that's it. It's the only scene he got in but, that whole movie. And we can all agree. This is everyone's least favorite Jimmy, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Good old Michael that, Cassidy. Definitely up there. All right. So we have our Daily Planet team. And we've picked them. We've done it. 
Happy 4th of July. I want to thank everyone for being here. James, thanks for showing up late. Finch, thanks for joining us from California. And the, even though you had lost power, you still made it. Levi, always nice to see you. Glad you could join us. Anthony, thank you for taking us time out of your immaculate podcasting schedule to join us today. And Brian, thank you for coming and, you know, being another brick in the wall behind you. Yeah, we don't need no education. And check out the show notes uh, below for your chance to make your own list. Let us know who you like, who would be on your team. And happy 4th. Don't steal the Declaration of Independence. America.